A few days ago, Elon Musk posted something very simple on X. No charts, no hype video, just five words. We have entered the singularity. Now, Elon says a lot of things, so on its own, that post might not mean that much, but here's the thing. Just a week earlier, a researcher at Anthropic, somebody who joined the company specifically to work on AGI, casually said that Claude Opus 4.5 is AGI, and then basically just moved on. No celebration, no victory lap, just uh, what do I do now? And he's not the only one Many frontier engineers, including Andre Karpathy, are also saying that just in the past month or so, there's been a fundamental shift in how well generative AI works for coding. In my mind, this is the moment we should really pay attention to, when the people who built the thing start calling it AGI in casual conversation. So today I want to talk about whether we've actually crossed a threshold into AGI, not science fiction AGI and not robot overlords, but something much quieter and possibly much more important. Is this the singularity? If so, it's happening without any fanfare fair, but the world will change forever. Let's take a look. Before we start, a quick shout out to my channel sponsor, Joa. They make the best accessories for your Tesla and other EVs, and they have amazing warranties and customer service too. In fact, I use their accessories daily. Be sure to check out the link in the description and get 5% off a fan-cooled phone charger, a portable tire inflator, a fold-out lap table, and so much more. And they make great gifts for you or your EV-loving friends too. So check out my link in the description to get 5% off, and now let's get back to it. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know It All. So as far as I can tell, this entire move towards talking about the singularity as if it's already here began with this post from Jackson Kearney in the day after Christmas on the 26th of December last year. I'm trying to figure out what to care about next. I joined Anthropic four plus years ago, motivated by the dream of building AGI or artificial general intelligence. I was convinced from studying philosophy of mind that we're approaching sufficient scale and that anything that can be learned can be learned in an RL environment. And then the important part is his reply to himself. And so now I feel like Opus 4.5 is as much AGI as I ever hoped for. <laughs> Let that one sink in. That is AGI in his mind, and he specifically joined four years ago to work on that. And I'm not sure I know what I want to spend my waking hours focused on, some ideas, and then he goes ahead and talks about these ideas. I'll leave a link to this and everything else in the description so you can read all of this at your leisure. The important part is not what he's thinking about, but the fact that this started a very large discussion about whether we've reached the artificial general intelligence singularity. And interestingly enough, on the same day, in fact, a few hours before Jackson's post, Andre Karpathy posted this, and I've actually done a video about this previously. If you want to check that out, it's up here. I've never felt this much behind as a programmer. The profession is being dramatically refactored as the bits contributed by the programmer are increasingly sparse and in between. I have a sense that I could be 10 times more powerful if I just properly string together what has become available over the past year, and a failure to claim the boost feels decidedly like skill issue. And then skipping to the end, clearly some powerful alien tool was handed around, except it comes with no manual and everyone has to figure out how to hold it and operate it, while the resulting magnitude 9 earthquake is rocking the profession. Roll up your sleeves to not fall behind. And that magnitude 9 earthquake, in my mind, is talking about this potential that we have actually reached the AGI singularity. And then a bit more recently, on January 3rd, David Holtz, who is the founder of Midjourney, said, I've done more personal coding projects over Christmas break than I have in the past 10 years. It's crazy. I can sense the limitations, but I know nothing is going to be the same anymore. To which Elon Musk responded, we have entered the singularity. And interestingly enough, this only has 2.8 million views, and I know that's a lot, but Elon Musk will often get 100 plus million views on something. So it seems a little surprising that something this important only has 2.8 million views. And I know Elon is optimistic. He tends to like over exaggerate the timelines of things and be a little bit optimistic in the way he's talking, but he's also generally right. He's generally early, but he's also generally right. And so if he's saying we have entered the singularity, I think we have to take that seriously. He's not making a giant post about it. He's not overhyping it. He's not saying that Tesla or XAI or somebody has gotten to the singularity. He's just saying we collectively as a society have gotten there. And just a real brief aside, if you don't know what, quote, the singularity is, it's a term invented by Ray Kurzweil, which is taking from physics the idea of a black hole at the center of the black hole where gravity is infinite. There's a gravitational singularity where everything gets pulled into it. The singularity for Ray Kurzweil is this idea that you've got this nexus of different trends that all come together at a point that is so dense that you can't unravel what is on the other side. It's a singularity that you can't look through. 
And what happens on the other side? Well, nobody knows because it's such a dense nexus, and that's why he terms it a singularity. So if we're actually entering the singularity right now, what comes out the other side? We actually don't know. Anything from a Matrix-like or Terminator-like future where everything goes completely south to a world of abundance, a Star Trek world where everything is amazing and money doesn't even exist anymore and you just have everything you need. And if you think Elon's a little bit too hypey, Ashok Eloswamy definitely is not. He's the head of Tesla AI, and he said on January 4th, everybody's a CEO. Now, Tesla Economics asked the question, what do you mean by that? And he responded with AI, anybody can build anything now. They have the agents at their discretion working in tandem to achieve the goal. And that sounds pretty darn much like he's claiming that we have reached the moment of artificial general intelligence. And continuing with the Tesla theme, even though this is not a large language model or something like Claude or ChatGPT, I think that this post from David Moss on December 31st of 2025, I'm proud to announce that I have successfully completed the world's first USA coast-to-coast -coast fully autonomous drive. I think that's also a very strong indication that we have reached the moment of artificial general intelligence. A car can drive cross-country, and as it turned out, it drove all the way back again as well, so double that. But this on a very physical level, as opposed to just in the digital world, indicates the moment of singularity as well. If a car can drive cross country without intervention, that is a huge deal. That's something that seemed like science fiction even maybe six months ago. And then this from just a couple of days ago on January 6th from Business Insider, Anthropics president says the idea of AGI may already be outdated. So this is Daniela Amade as opposed to Dario Amade. Anyway, she is the president of Anthropic. And as you can see here, she says AGI is such a funny term. Many years ago, it was kind of useful concept to say, when will artificial general intelligence be as capable as a human? Today, she said that framing is breaking down. By some definitions of that, we've already surpassed that. So she's basically saying we're already at AGI. She said, pointing to areas like software development where Anthropic's Claude model can now write code at a level comparable to many professional engineers, including some in insiders at the company. And then finally, something that has just popped out in the past couple of days is the Ralph Wiggum harness. And of course, Ralph Wiggum being the character from The Simpsons, but this harness in conjunction with Claude Opus 4.5 can allow you to set an agent off to run overnight to do very, very high level code development with many sub projects. It's basically test driven agile development, but entirely inside an agent harness where humans don't even have to interact with it. You just set it off. Once you get it set up properly, you set it off and it works on its own. Does it take a little bit of work right now to get it running? Yeah, you have to know what GitHub is. You have to be able to code a little bit. You have to be comfortable with terminal inputs and things like that. But remember, this just came out a couple of days ago. There will be a user interface that will be slapped on the front of this and it will become easier and easier to use over time. And so what Ashok said here, everybody's a CEO now, is really going to come to pass. You won't even have to be a coder anymore. You'll just have to have the entrepreneurial spirit and the ability to set these agents off in motion on their own and they'll be able to work for you as an entire team and the first billion dollar AI company with only one human at the helm is is coming possibly by the end of 2026 definitely by the end of 2027 at least in my opinion so let's refocus on this original post and think about what AGI is, whether we've actually achieved the singularity, and if so, what does that mean for the future? Are we in line for a hard takeoff where we hit the hockey stick moment and AI becomes more and more and more intelligent very, very rapidly, and we humans are just left slack-jawed watching this intelligence explosion? Or is this all overblown and overhyped? One thing I'll start with with the idea of overhyping is you can see that a lot of this stuff is really not very hypey anymore. It's not like blown up and said in a way that seems like you're, they're trying to hype their own product or something. These folks are just matter-of-factly saying, yeah, it's here, and now what do I do? So basically, Jackson is saying here that we've achieved general competence across domains. There's a reliable reasoning at a useful depth. In other words, it's able to keep going for a long period of time. And there's a transfer of skill and learning that happens without retraining the foundation model. That's an important part of this new harness. I'm going to have to get used to saying harness. I'm just used to saying scaffolding. But anyway, that harness, and if you look at the Ralph Wiggum project, it has training. It has the transfer of knowledge that is built into the harness to allow the model to become smarter and smarter at your project as it continues working on it. And so if you think about it that way, AGI does not mean necessarily that it's smarter than humans or smarter than all humans. It just means it's smart enough that progress doesn't stall and it can continue working on a project for a long period of time. So what's really changed here? Well, number one, the foundation models have gotten smarter and smarter, of course. But more importantly, we're talking 
talking about agents here. And this is a term that became very popular, of course, in 2025. But I think at the beginning of 2026, we're seeing it really start to take off. As opposed to a chatbot that just responds to you, an agent is more like a person. It has agency. It remembers, it plans, it executes, it checks its own work. In other words, it's able to test itself. And very importantly, it persists over time. It has memory. So the base model gives you that intelligence, but it's in isolation. The scaffolding or harness gives you that intelligence over time and puts it inside of a framework. And that results in agents that allow intelligence to compound over time. And that could really represent the moment that we get the hard AI takeoff. And we've really gone from chatbots answering questions in a minute or two or something like that to agents that are able to work successfully on a project overnight and do the equivalent of days or even weeks of work by software engineers. And really and truly, the moment that intelligence persists over time and can learn from itself, improvement stops being linear and we really are in line for a hard takeoff. And I think it's important to look at Ralph Wiggum, what that harness actually gives us. It's not very complicated. It's not completely crazy. You don't need complex meta reasoners. You don't need elaborate planning trees. You don't need hand tuning for symbolic systems. All you need is a strong base model, a simple loop. It really isn't that complicated. It's just a few lines of code, persistence, tool access, and of course, memory. In other words, agentic capability is emerging from really surprisingly dumb scaffolding wrapped around very smart models. So is this the AGI singularity? Well, it's certainly not consciousness. I don't think a lot of people would argue for that. Neither is it really self-aware machines. Maybe Tesla's full self-driving is the closest to self-awareness, but I would still argue it's not very self-aware at this point. And it's certainly also not overnight human obsolescence. We're not going to be obsolete tomorrow, but we could be obsolete in five years. What it is, on the other hand, is cognitive labor that is no longer bottlenecked by humans. That is a really big deal. It can go way, way faster. Because of that, we get a collapse in time to execution and individuals are able to scaffold like teams used to. So as it turns out, the singularity isn't machines waking up and becoming conscious. It's progress speeding up without asking our permission. It's these agents able to work on their own for longer and longer horizon tasks. So is this the actual hard takeoff? Is this the thing that people have been worried about where exponentials compound upon each other and we hit a hockey stick moment? Well, certainly feedback loops are getting shorter. When you take humans out of the bottleneck, things go much, much faster. Of course, agents can now improve the tools that are used to build agents, which is another major improvement. And every generation of this reduces the friction with humans. For example, right now, Claude Code and OpenAI's Codex and Ralph Wiggum, they're all kind of buried inside GitHub, inside terminal commands and things, but people will put user interface faces on the front of this to make it easier for humans to deal with. And that, of course, reduces friction and the agents get better and better. But of course, there are roadblocks still. Agents still are missing stable goals over really long term periods of time. They're missing taste. They don't really understand what is the best kind of coding, even what humans like, what aesthetic judgments do we want, things like that. Taste is an important factor, and it's something that these models don't quite have yet. And they don't have that real reality based ground truth judgment. They don't have that yet either. But again, if we look at Tesla's full self driving, that is the closest to that type of eventuality. And that points the way towards a very different type of singularity than the, what these large language models are giving us. So things aren't vertical yet on that curve. It is still a curve, but that curve is bending more and more sharply upward. So we really better be paying attention. So there's a really specific if that matters here. We only get true exponential growth if two things happen at the same time. First, agents have to be able to carry out long horizon tasks on their own, and we're not measuring things in minutes or hours, but days or weeks without a human constantly steering them. And second, they have to be able to meaningfully build on their own results, not just repeat tasks over and over again, but actually take what they produced yesterday, evaluate it, improve it, and push it forward to make it better tomorrow. If both of those things are true, then the human stops being the bottleneck or the pacing item. And once you remove the human bottleneck, that's when growth really can become truly geometric. That is the switch. And that's where a lot of people, including me, think we have actually arrived. We're actually getting to that moment. For some of you, that's like, wow, it took a long time. I thought it would happen a year or two ago. For others, I bet you were thinking, man, it's going to happen in 2035 or 2040 or something. Thing. It's a long time from now. I don't have to worry about it. Well, I'm here to say you probably should be worrying about it right now. So is this magic? No, it's a workflow that's getting better and better. It's systems that improve themselves faster than humans can micromanage. And as we see, agents can already run surprisingly long tasks. They already build useful artifacts, but they still struggle with taste, judgment, and knowing when they're wrong. So for now, at least humans are still the quality filter, but the trend is pretty darn clear. Each generation reduces how often that filter is needed. And that would be Andre's sparse inputs, what he talks about when he says sparsity. 
So crazily enough, this is the first time in history where intelligence feels like it's starting to run faster than human supervision, and once that gap opens even slightly, things change really, really fast. So if you're waiting for a headline that says AGI achieved, you're waiting for the wrong signal. The real signal is that the tools stopped asking us what to do next, and now we're watching them work on their own. So have we reached the singularity? Have we reached artificial general intelligence? I would have to agree with Elon Musk here and say that yes, we have. Is that both exciting and terrifying because we don't know what happens next? Yes, it is. And I, for one, will keep a real close eye out on that and let you all know how things progress. Alrighty, folks, that's what I've got for you today. If you did enjoy the video, please like it so other people can find it. And if you want to keep up with all of this kind of stuff and more, please consider subscribing for more of this kind of content. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.